All right. Good evening, and this is the regular city council meeting for the city of Minnetrista. It is February 7th today. Um, it's 7 o'clock. I'm going to call the meeting to order. One, uh, please, if you have um, phones or electronic devices, put them on cell phone mode, uh, airplane mode or off so they don't disrupt the meeting. And first, would you please join me in Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So again, welcome all of you that are here this evening and also watching later on. So first, I'd like to make some introductions here. Um, I'm Lisa Whalen. I'm the mayor. Uh, to my right, I have a left, excuse me, right, left. To your right, um, council members seated are Pam Mortensen, John Chumperlin, Ann McGregor, Kathleen Refkin. And then um, staff present this evening, we have our city engineer with WSB, Allison Fowski, our public works superintendent, Gary Peters, our city clerk, Don Motzko, and also sitting in the front row, we have Adam Gatois with WSB, also one of our engineers. And then to my right, I have city staff, David Abel, who is our community development director, and our number one person this evening, uh, sitting in as uh, for um, our administrator. And then we have uh, Brian Grimm, our finance director, Ali Palfos, who is our director of administration. And then our uh, Kennedy and Graven, we have Sarah Sonsalas. <laughs> okay. um, and then also on the end, we have our uh, Sitting in for our chief, we have Lieutenant Craig Squires. So welcome, everybody. And then we also have Greg Johnson with WSB. He will be doing a presentation on our water infrastructure in just a little bit. So again, welcome, everyone. With that, um, are there any changes to the agenda or additions? If not, is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Refkin. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Ms. Mortensen. So motion has been made by Ms. Refkin and seconded by Ms. Mortensen. All those in favor will signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 5-0. So we're going to start with our special presentation. Mr. Johnson or Ms. Fowski. Well, Madam Mayor, while, while Mr. Johnson is standing, uh, stepping up to the podium, um, I just wanted to quickly go over, uh, we have a presentation this evening, but um, to cover the water supply projections and the new development discussion. But I did just want to mention to the council um, with regards to the Mount Simon Aquifer, some of the conversations that we've had about, um, about getting a well in that aquifer. We are meeting with the DNR this week to discuss um, that as an option, as well as um, timeline and uh, schedule for that sort of um, for that work. Um, so we'll be bringing that up to the council once we get more direction from the DNR. And I'll be interjecting. I think we've got a portion of the presentation tonight that I'll cover with some of the development work, but I'll turn it over to Greg. So Mr. Johnson, real quick, kind of on that same vein, I also wanted the council to know and our public to know that um, Ms. Fowski and Mr. Peters and I did meet with um, people at uh, St. Bonnie. We met with their mayor, their uh, public works um, director, and um, their administrator. And the reason for our meeting was to see if they were open to some dialogue for some um, sharing of water resources. In the past, they have not been, but this was a very, very uh, positive meeting. I was very encouraged, and I'm cautiously very optimistic because they were very much on board and felt it would be a really a good win-win for both cities, which would help us out um, and would help them out as well. So just so you know, those are ongoing talks as well. So with that, Mr. Johnson. Good evening, Madam Mayor. So tonight we're going to look at the uh, study that we did for the, uh, the salt water system, specifically for the, the MUSA area, in case you don't know what MUSA stands for, that's, that's the Municipal Urban Service Area. Go to the next slide, please. So it's a little hard to tell on this graphic here, too, but if you look at the dotted line that goes around the salt system and it kind of jogs around the lakes, and, and uh, you can see that's the MUSA boundary. Too. So that, that's the area that we study. And, and so we're looking at water demands, so we're looking at recent <coughs> historical water demands, and then we're looking, looking at water demands for, for planned development uh, and uh, ultimate 
developing within the user. So, next slide, please. So in your demo, you've got this table that has a lot of numbers in here. It's the most complicated. There's a lot of columns and whatnot too. But if you break down the the view set, it breaks down to uh, uh, residential, low, medium, high development, and then mixed residential, and then also uh, retail and commercial, which are more planned for the future. So when we look at uh, water demand projections, we're, we're looking at historical water demands, and then we're when we're looking at plan development, we're looking at numbers that are associated with how many gallons used per acre, for example, for development. And that's going to be different for residential and commercial. <clears throat> so if we take these projections and we put them across these existing development projections and future development projections, we can come up with total numbers. And what we highlighted here is if you look at the uh, the maximum data demands, that's, so we're always designed for max data demands. There, there's average data demands, but then max data demands occur in the summertime. So the max data demands that we're looking at uh, for the existing system, currently it's about 1.167 million gallons per day, but then when you compare that to your historical pumpage for the last period, 2016 to 2020, where we had full data, um, we're about 1.162 NGD. So those numbers are pretty close to the land use projections. You want to get those fairly close. Now when you compare that to the treatment capacity, the design for treatment capacity of a salt water plant is 1.44 NGD. Now just to clarify, that's the design capacity. We're, uh, city staff is currently working with the design engineer to get it up to that capacity. And the goal was to get it there well before summer, just to let you know. Um, so then moving forward, we look at all the planned development within that view set, which is mainly the Woodland Cove area. And if you look at that column on the far right, once we reach that maximum development, we're looking at a projected max state demand of 3.89 million gallons per day. Because that's, that's out into the future, but it's something that we want to plan for. So are there any questions on that slide? I know there's a lot of numbers there, and it's a lot of Jealous, but Steve's got a question. Um, okay, when, go ahead. I was going to wait for questions at the end, but That's fine. Can, can, okay. Can okay. I will ask okay. one. One, maybe this will help. How far out is that projected? Then I don't. It's hard to see. You know, I'm, I'm going to have to refer to the community development director on that, but it's. Um, I'm going to get into the second part of it. I'm going to tell how many units we can serve with the existing infrastructure. Okay. But it is going out into the future. So you're yeah. talking build out of what the build out of the new side, the new side. I'm saying the projected demand of 3.89 is that 10 years out? Is that two years out? Do we know? It'd be five to ten. Okay. I mean, it, it depends on the how many of Woodland Cove. You know, we're, we're doing a hundred or so units a year. Okay. You know, a year. So you, they took the. What, what Woodland Cove has been building at, and that's what they entered into the okay. system. Okay. Madam Mayor, if I may also clarify as well. So we have the Woodland Cove, but we also have other large parcels within the current right. MUSA that, to my knowledge, have not expressed an interest in developing, but those are included in those numbers as well. Okay, that's what I said. So yep. this is all of the current MUSA Correct. Um, areas. Okay. Yep. That That's significantly more, actually, than, than just Woodland Cove. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we'll ask more, but yeah. just for yeah, clarification. Uh, okay. Let's see next slide, please. So when you look at the, the phasing of this, again, the current existing design capacity is 1.44 million gallons per day. That's what we're trying to, to get to. And so when you look at, you know, what does this mean in terms of needed infrastructure over the next five to 10 years? Um, what we're looking at is the need for two additional water treatment plants you know, that are sized for 1,000 GPM each, which is the capacity of your existing water plant, and, uh, and then uh, three, probably most likely four wells to meet these demands. So you know, the goal, if we build a second plant, we get the capacity of 2.88 MGD, and then with a third one, that would cover that entire usage we have in the future. 
for the third water plant, so if that happens in 10 years. Uh, but that's that's a new infrastructure we're going to need based on these projections. Or you could build one plant for 2,000, or you could build one plant for 1,000 and add another filter for another 1,000. I mean, you, you could, and it, and, it's, and it depends on how closely you can build your wells next to each other. Right. Do it. Okay. If the wells have to be spaced apart, then in those cases, the, you know, it makes more sense to have the plants at those locations. Do because it, it really goes on to the cost of transmission mains. Okay. People have been ice processes them. So. Okay. Okay, next slide. So this table here, again, a lot of numbers, and we're looking at uh, uh, new developments that are planned and within the self use of it. So uh, scenario A is just an existing development. So you can see the average day demand, uh, max day demand. And then currently on that scenario A, we're listing the current capacity of the self water plant until we can get it up to its full capacity. So that's 1.267 MGD. So if you take that salt water plant capacity and you subtract the max day demand, that tells you how much excess capacity you have, which is your residual capacity. So based on this, it would be about a point, like 105,000 gallons a day, which is 0.105 MGD. And then these, these other scenario, scenarios, we have scenario B, we would add another 100 units from Woodland Cove on top of this. And then uh, scenario C is a, an additional 100 units. So now we have 200 additional units from Woodland Cove. And then we also looked at the scenario D, which includes a combination of B and C, but it includes 32 additional homes at the County Road, uh, County Road 110 West development. So now we have 232 additional homes on top of the additional development. So if you look at this again, we achieve our goal of getting the plant up to its full capacity. Um, we're going to be running the plant at about, about 90, 91 percent of its capacity. That's that's start to push it. And uh, but as, if we achieve that, based on these projections, we should be able to serve at least 232 homes. Beyond that, we need additional wells. We need additional treatment. See next slide, please. And with that, uh, I'd be happy to take any questions that you may have. So, um, <clears throat> what I don't understand, maybe you can explain this, Mr. Johnson. Um, when it, it go back to that um, table number four, because it says um, B maximum day south water treatment capacity. So the maximum day increases, but the capacity stays the same. But then the residual actually goes up a little bit, or am I getting reading that wrong? Yeah, that, that's correct. So, so currently, if, you know, we're looking at the treatment capacity as it's actually scenario A, which is the one point two six seven MGD. Right. Now, our goal is to get up to one point four four, which is going to add additional treatment capacity. So then, if you take that subtract, okay, I okay, demand, yeah, yeah, I get it now. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, now, <laughs> another question. With these other 200 homes coming online in Woodland Cove, we're, we're looking at, and correct me if I'm wrong, David, are they going to be using stormwater for their irrigation? Correct. Okay. Did you take that into account? Because I think some of Woodland Cove currently uses city water for irrigation, and then some does not. In the future, these 100 or 200 additional homes are going to not be using city water for irrigation. Is that calculated in here? Which would, I think, make the max, change that max calculation a little bit. Yeah, that's a good question. I'll have to look into that. Okay. Um, that's a good question. Okay. Madam Mayor, um, I, I believe when we were looking at that, that's correct. So the first iteration, we it, the assumption was that the use would be water demands based on irrigation from the, the, the potable water use. Um, when we look to refine um, that memo and those projections, they did adjust the demand, the water demands based on the irrigation system from um, the water reuse project. So the, the numbers here reflect that. Okay, that's in our packet. Correct. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay, council questions? 
What percentage do we want to be at? Since obviously 91% is not good. What's the target range? 75, 80? Well, I'll say this. I feel a little more comfortable now that you have the new watercolor. Oh, I, yeah, that does help. And, uh, but I, I would say 90%, 91%, like we've shown here, that's, that's probably a good number to stick to. So based on these projections, I would, you know, safely not go over that. Right. So, yeah. Which to me makes sense. That gives you 10% wiggle room or whatever, basically, right. and, and should hopefully guard against any anomalies and drier years, et cetera, if we right. get the plant up to the 1.44, which it sounds like the, is optimistic based on Geary's discussions with SEH, so I guess I'm feeling better about that. Well, question now, um, I know you said it takes anywhere from, you know, one to two years or 18 months, whatever, to bring new wells online. With two new wells, what what kind of capacity? We're still looking at the 1.44 capacity, though, right? So what what good are the wells going to do us without the water without another water treatment plant? Yeah, and, and that's the next recommendation is to to get two more wells developed as soon as possible, um, and to build another second water plant. Okay, so yeah. is the capacity going to go up once we build the water plant, the next water plant? Or is the capacity going up if we drill two new wells? Well, when we look at treated, when I say treated water, I mean the water is treated. Yeah. Know, regardless of which way get. But it, let's call it filtered water. Filtered water is going to be is going to go up through capacity when the wells and the treatment plant. And the treatment are, plant. Okay. Too, so it's it's both of those. Okay. Yeah. And we could do those simultaneously almost. You could. You I mean, could. And, you know, the last six and seven you were doing almost Right. Well, six and seven, you're doing almost concurrently with the construction of the water plant, so mm -hmm. it can be done. In, you know, we could rely on the the test well for for doing the pilot study that we talked about previously. Right. You know, you're going to want to do a pilot study to confirm the treatment, but that can, can be done on the test well. Okay. Yeah. So then we could design and we could do the wells and the treatment plant kind of simultaneously. Okay. Are we going to get a new map of where we could possibly do wells if we can't drill into Mount Simon? Yeah, that's, you know, part of this is going to come from our, I think when we have this meeting with the DNR, which is on Wednesday. Which is on Wednesday, yeah. To, um, they're going to tell us what the possibilities are, too, because the DNR realizes that the, the whole Southwest Metro is a challenging area for wells and groundwater. Too, and, and they have been making some except, exceptions to other cities in the Southwest Metro. Too, and that's something we want to talk to them about mm -hmm. too, to see if there is the potential where we could maybe drill maybe one well in the tunnel city water lock and maybe a second well right next to it in the Mount Simon Inquiry. But we have to get the approval to do that. Uh, but they, they have been making exceptions too. So I, I think we're going to learn a lot more from that meeting. Mm -hmm. Right. Too, that, you know, the challenges, you know, we, when we looked at you know, we did a test wall here at the site for number eight, and that told us a lot. It told us that we can only get 300 GPM out of this location. But the challenge is that to get into the deeper, you know, deeper parts of the tunnel city <coughs> block are very limited in, in the metro stuff. We were able to find it with wells six and seven, six and seven or 550 feet, 50 feet deep. But as you know, we can only construct so many wells next to six and seven. Too, so that's how far we have to go from there. Well, there's there's a couple other options too. I know you mentioned um, in near Woodland Cove that might be options, but I think the first step is to determine whether or not we can go into the uh, Mount Simon. Um, and it almost sounds like we're going to have to maybe do both. And um, so there's some options there. We what I hope to get at the meeting on Wednesday is one: Are they even open to that possibility, or are they just going to shut it down right away? Um, hopefully not. I'll cry a lot, and, you know, <laughs> try and, no. Um, but um, we're hoping that they'll give us some kind of indication as to e if it's even a possibility. The other thing I hope is that they'll give us next steps and how long those next steps and processes will, will take us. That'll give us um, also a good, good um, idea as to process and also time timeline. Um, and then concurrently, we'll, we'll still be talking with St. Bonnie. That could also be another um, real big asset to them as well as to us. And since, um, and I don't want to, again, I don't want to say too much because it's very preliminary right now, but that could 
help us out tremendously. And um, so we're, we're, we're going to work on that and, um, and continue the wells and treatment plant. So I want to say as soon as we find out about the wells, we'll want to start thinking then, and we know where they're going to go. So that's the thing. Then we can start thinking about the design for that, that next treatment plant. Right. I'm just saying, pending how the conversation goes with DNR this week, if they say, no, I want to see something back with council, like, here are your options of where else we think we can get a well in. I want to see a right. map, basically, of mm -hmm. this is where we can possibly think we can test drill again. <clears throat> yes. I don't have a lot of faith that the DNR is going to say yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> so the well on here didn't meet capacity, right. but then do we talk three wells? If they're lesser capacity instead of two, there's three. Okay. If they're all lesser, but the three together would equal what we needed from two? Yeah, um, yeah that's a good question. The, the, the challenge is when you're that close together, both that 300 would cut something less, so they're all popping next to each other. Do we, you know, so it, <laughs> it really comes down to the limited depth, the limited depth of the tunnel so we want to walk, and how much dry on there is when you're pumping it, when you're pumping it down. And, um, that's your limitation, yes. You know, so you might be able to put a couple wells on the maybe 400, 500 in one location, but not the 1,000 GPM that we need mm -hmm. for our full treatment capacity. That's, we we want to shoot for 1,000 mm -hmm. if we potentially can, because then, then the treatment plants, or the cost of the treatment plant becomes less. If we can do a, a 1,000 GPM plant versus you know, a bunch of smaller plants, you most bang for a buck, so. Mm -hmm. When will we know for sure that we'll be able to get to the 1.44 capacity? Um, I think we're just right there. Give an update, uh, like, uh, uh, staff is working with the original designer on, um, they're gonna be uh, feeding a polymer with the plant to try to address the short filter runs. And, uh, I know Gary's working with, uh, you know, they're getting electrician involved, uh, the, the order of chemical feed pump. So I think that's pretty close. They, they have the pump in hand and they have the chemical ready to go. It's a matter of getting it there, getting it set up and um, hooking it up and getting it running. So I would uh, anticipate hopefully by the end of next week that we will have this going. That's, that's our goal. Uh, to get everything here, get it at least a test run and see how it's gonna function. Okay. Just also, um, I talked to Gary this afternoon and I was interested in finding out now <coughs> during the non-irrigation time frame, what, how is our water tower and what is our, our levels that it's being maintained? I think that's important to know because that'll show us how much we're using for irrigation and how much we're using for regular use. So Gary, I, it's hard, I know you don't have it on, on a PowerPoint, but can you kind of describe to the council what you found out or what you're? During the summer, we keep our tower at 38 feet. That's our maximum height that we keep it at. During the winter, we draw it down to 36 feet to, so we get more turnover of the water um, so we can actually turn it over and fill it more to keep the warmer water coming in and help it from icing up. Um, we get, drop it down about 30 feet, uh, pump it back to 36 feet. Uh, we, I apologize, I mean, the car, the, the, the SCADA does not print out on a big sheet of paper. I apologize for that. But just print out for what the mayor described here. Um, basically, it's just a bar graph. We keep it pretty tight. I mean, it's right, if you if you average it out, it's like 35.4 feet is what that tower stays at on average. Um, the lowest it's dropped was 32, uh, I think it was 32.9 feet is what it went down to at its lowest, oh, I'm sorry, 30.69 at its lowest point. That was due to the uh, plant being in backwash. So what that means is it cannot run to fill the tower. So the tower is still drawing down on use. So once it's done with the backwash, then it recycles, you know, refills the tower. So that happens, um, let's just say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It happened like about 12 times uh, between, this is just November 5th through January, or through December 5th, it happened 12 times that we actually dip low. In between that, we keep a nice tight pattern that's just normal water use. So compared to June, July, August, when we were dipping down to 13 feet, you know, we, we went from in an eight hour period from our 38 feet down to 
13 feet in eight hours. That's the amount of water that's going out to once. And when the new pump and everything is working, we'll backwash less, correct? Correct. Um, there's going to be some cost up front, but we will be able to get better efficiency out of our filters. And with that efficiency comes longer run times. Um, right now, we're at that 13, 14 hour before we, while we hit the backwash, which does not allow a lot of time for settling of the discharged water into the um, so, um, into the sludge tank. So we're wasting a lot of water. When we get this, it'll have time for that um, debris, when I call it as such, that's coming out of the um, media to settle out. We'll be able to reclaim that water and reuse it. Also, they'll be adding, and they're already at the north plant. Uh, why they're not at the south plant, we do not know, but there are some valves that we're gonna put in that'll help regulate the amount of water flow, which will also cut down on how much water is used during backwash. Between these two, uh, um, what do you call it, modifications in the system, the payback, uh, according to the engineers at SCH, will be less than a year for output just on water saved that we can turn around instead of discharging and paying, paying the Met Council <laughs> um, to treat, we'll be sending out to pay it to actually get billed for. So we're looking forward to it. I mean, it'll be, you know, be nice. Um, John Thomas, who I'm working with with SEH, um, he will have numbers and all that. We'll have a nice presentation to show you what's going to happen. Um, once we get this test cycle running and we'll let you know how it goes. But everything's looking promising. Good. With the new tower, what level will we keep that at? The new tower is pretty close and pretty tight to this one. We may not be able to keep our tower at the 38. Uh, the Kings Point Tower may be dropped down a little bit just due to elevation. Um, there is no altitude valve in Kings Point at this time. What an altitude valve does will keep both towers equal. Um, if we were to fill maximum capacity to full full, which no one ever does, we will overflow the Kings Point Tower. So, but that'll be in a, our SCADA system will monitor that. We will, you know, definitely, you know, keep it at that steady level between the two. In 2023, I believe we're redoing the uh, Kings Point Tower. We've had nothing uh, done to it since its construction. So it'll be a complete um, makeover there. We will be looking at adding an altitude valve in and WSB is aware of this, so we want that in there. So it'll be added into the cost of it, which will help immensely to prevent any of that. But um, once, I mean, we're not we're not talking a lot of water difference. In, you know, if we keep it down a few feet, you know, on the one compared to the other, we'll have so much extra water in reserve to help. It'll make a world of difference. Council questions. Um, before I go to the audience, which I will, um, for questions, and I know, Mr. Duca um, Steve, you have questions to Coleus, um, I, I just wanted to share a couple things. So um, you probably saw, I, I got an email this afternoon from um, uh, Michael Young, and um, he, I think you were copied. He had some comments, and I, I think it's prudent to address these comments and, and concerns because I think it's possible that other people in our community might have the same questions. And I think that um, some of this, um, so anyhow, I'm gonna um, go through this a little bit. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but um, they, he has concerns uh, in, uh, because of um, the impacts that uh, more new homes uh, will have to the south system. We've kind of addressed that this evening with the previous comments. But um, he has a list here of things that he'd like us to consider. Uh, one, he says, place a moratorium on all new residential development that will access the south system until a plan is in place that will ensure adequate water supply to both existing and new Minitrista residents accessing the south system. So a couple of issues with that. Everybody should be aware that when the city puts on a moratorium, we are limited to a one year time span. So if we were to impose a moratorium, let's say today, we would have until February 7th of next year. As you've heard this evening, and as if you recall, it's going to take us probably two to two and a half years to bring the two new treatment plants and the water plant online. So a moratorium right now, today, is probably premature. We would want to do this should all else fail and, and we're not ready to bring 
two new wells and a water treatment plant online, we would want to do this when we reach that 90% tile, um, as, as um, Mr. Johnson pointed out. When we're at that 90%, or maybe shortly before, we would want to consider doing a moratorium. Um, if we do it now, what's going to happen, it would have to come off at least a year or even a year and a half prior to those other facilities coming online, and then we would really be in a pickle. So consider that. Um, we also have to, um, the other thing is, the, all of the developments, all of the phases, and all of the homes that are scheduled for Woodland Cove, those, regardless of a moratorium, they would still be coming online. By state statute and by law, if you have approved a, a subdivision, the final plat, they then have the opportunity to continue building regardless of a moratorium. So you need to also understand that. And that's why we're focusing on the 200 homes in Woodland Cove. That's one of the reasons we need to focus on that and make sure that we have enough water to supply not only those 200 new additional homes, but also the homes that are currently being served. Um, then the next thing, uh, spend appropriate time during this moratorium period to prudently develop a long-term plan for the modification of the South system. Um, so as you heard tonight, we are already doing that. We're trying to bring the um, water treatment plant up to um, full capacity, and it sounds like we're going to be able to do that soon. We also have a long-term water plan in place that we've had in place for the last seven or eight years, uh, which included the uh, new wells, the new water treatment plants, the water tower, and when that was all done, we also had new wells plan for that time as well. And then it says, consider imposing special assessments on residential developers that desire to develop homes that will access the south water system to offset some of the costs of the long-term enhancement of the south system. What that sounds like is developer, development impact fees. That is not allowed by state statute. We cannot impose additional fees on development. What we can do and what we have been doing is when, when, a system, when a developer comes in and wants to do a subdivision, they have to pay area charges. It's called WAC, WAC fees and SAC fees. So they pay based on the number of acreages that they bring into the, de the development. They have to pay a certain number for that. I think it's eight or $9,000 per acre. And then every single unit that is a, um, connected to city water, they also have to pay a fee. And I think it's currently 3200 3600 No, it's even closer. It was like it's 3100 3100 There's a little difference between what right. it is in Woolman Cove and stuff, but it's a little over $3,000. Right. So it's over $3,000 per unit. Now, a lot of people don't know this because those are fees that are paid by the developer and by the builder before you close your house, before you buy your house. But we already, um, and we look at those fees every single year, and we adjust those, as you know, with our fee schedule, and we look at those based on our long-term projections for infrastructure need. The other thing, it says evaluate near-term and temporary solutions to access to um, assess the remaining unused filtering capacity at the south system. So we're doing a number of things, not necessarily unfiltered, but we're also, like I said, talking to St. Bonnie to see if there's an op opportunity there to um, to join with them, uh, to join forces with them, and share resources there. So we're looking at other options in that in that way. I don't know that that answers all of your questions. The only other one I would say here is, um, I know you were somewhat frustrated. It sounded like in your email that we're considering another development on County Road 110 West. And here's here's the law: we can't stop any developer from coming in and and applying for uh, putting in an application. Anybody can come in and put an ap application in. What staff can do is give the developer or the property owner information so that they're well informed. But if that still doesn't stop them from applying in any manner, the city council has an obligation to look at the application and to consider it. That doesn't mean we have to approve it, but we do have to consider it. We can't just say, nope, we're not even going to look at it. That, that's not an option. By state statute, we have 60 days to act on any application, any land use application. We can extend that a little bit, and I won't get into those, those rules. But we do have to consider those applications. So with that, 
um, any questions of counsel. Otherwise, I'm going to go to Steve. You wanted to make some, you have some questions or comments. Yeah, I do. Um, if you can, Steve, could I ask you to come yeah, so will, that it can be recorded better? Yeah, no problem. So, is the work packet on PowerPoint? Do you have that accessible? You can project it or no? The, the, the council packet. packet. The what? What he just present? What Jeff? No, okay. No. The council page packet. Page seven oh. of the, your work packet today. Well, I think it's what Greg presented. No, it's not. This is Greg. okay. So a couple of questions. Okay. And we don't have to find. I can hold it up and pretend. Um, that north development aren't those all lakeshore lots? No. On, on which you're talking Woodland Cove? No, no, no. The no, no. one ten. No, the one ten. No, no. There's there's one lot in Mound that's part of the development that. Um, but those other lots are not lakeshore lots. No, okay. no, no. All right, all right. So the tower capacity, we have the four hundred thousand square feet is the total for the north development. Is that maximum capacity or is that usable capacity? Maximum. So at what, we factor that down by 15%? I would say 10 probably. 10, okay. 10 to factor 15 is in. probably reasonable. Factor that in. And then how many homes are out or included <laughs> in the remaining areas of the open code that have been approved for development that we can't stop? Um, we have, boy, we have the the fourth and fifth edition, and then the seventh and eighth, I think we went 100 units a year for f three years or four years. Was that correct? Two. Yeah, aren't there, and there's like 400 more homes set to be built. Yeah. 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 So look, we can't stop that. That's 445 more homes. So that should be taken into consideration. All right, so now a little bit of history. Um, on July 19th, WS presented this chart. Greg, this is, oh, all right, we can go here. This is good. So thank you. If we look at table one, I think there was a huge mistake, or I won't call it a mistake. I think it's incorrect to use averages over those years, given this rate of increase, right? If you use averages and your, your demand is growing like this, you're always going to be short. You need to project out beyond where you think you're going to be. So if we do that, and looking at the this graph that was presented on July 19, which is the following, it shows the projected demand. This graph. Yep. You guys probably remember that. So if you look at this, we have. I won't, I'll stay here. So at an 88 percent, which is where we are right now. In 2017, we were at 97.4 capacity. And that's at 88%, which is the 1.2672 million gallons that are in today's packet. In 2018, we exceeded it by 8%. So we're 108%. That's at 1.368. And then if we look at 20, we were just right at the capacity, one percent over. So we've already hit some trigger points in the past several years. So I would advise that maybe that average is not the right thing to be looking at, because the growth of the of the of the city is exceeding that, and I think we need to be a little bit more proactive. And I don't know how you move faster. Are we going to be buying water at the same? Bonnie, is that the sharing part? They share water, we can share money. I mean, I don't know how to they, do it. <laughs> they have they have infrastructure that they have to support, and we would absolutely we'd have to buy water. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, well, that's fair. That seems to make right. sense. So, um, I, I if they have infrastructure that we wouldn't have to put in, right? I so, understand. yeah. But we still have to put it in. If you look at the growth rate, we're going to have to put it in at some point. Correct. And I would really encourage the council to look at something that's got some vision. Two million gallon water plant. I know you have a plan, Mayor. I've seen it. I've read it, all 300 pages of it. 
But the fact is, is we're in a situation that we're going we're gonna to have a hard time digging ourselves out of it. It's going to be very difficult. Now, we get some relief from St. Bonnie. It's short term. We still have 445 homes, even though they don't have any uh, irrigation attached to them. But if the city wants to grow, I think it's prudent that we look at something, even if we have to pay for it. Because I don't know how bonding works, but can't bonds be paid for by the people who use the service? It's not the, it's not the money that's the issue, Steve. The issue is the timing to do all this and the permitting to, to get all this. And that's why I asked Gary to look at you know, how are we doing when we're not irrigating? Right. Um, is that, is that, or, I mean, if, if Gary had come back and shown us these graphs that was, that showed us without irrigation, we're, we're drawing down to that 15% or 20% right. every day, I'd be a lot more concerned. I'm not saying we're not concerned, but we are moving along as fast as we can, as well as we can, um, and still monitoring everything, like like I said, and we're looking at all the options that we can possibly consider. And more than that, we can't do any more than that. And if anybody has a different idea, Ann, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, it's not a different idea. I, I just want to ask Steve. Okay. So um, what we're talking about is a water treatment plant. Right. What we're talking about are two more wells. Right. Two or three. If we can, if we can do that. Okay. So, right. so my That's question. Two hundred thousand gallons a minute. Right? Yeah. About a thousand gallons each. Yeah. So, so my question to you is because I, I would agree with you your point about the averages. That's actually a very good point. Sleeve. Excellent point. Yeah. But, um, I'm not sure there's much more than what we just said we can do that we can do. What are you suggesting? Well, we have to find out first of all if we can have if we can even drill wells. Right. Right. If right. we can drill wells, then great. Let's okay. move forward with that as fast as possible. Okay. But we have to have a plant design. Yes. In anticipation of that. And I don't know how long it takes to design a plant. Okay, so the reason um, Mr. Johnson had pointed that out, when you design a plant, you have to figure out what your wells what what's in your wells in terms right. of I what that. right and so we can't start designing the plant until we know what the water quality is in our wells well, that we're going to be drilling. We can design some of Greg, how long does it take to design a plant? <clears throat> it's about uh, four to six months. Yeah. But how much of that is dependent on what kind of filtration you're going to have to do and what kind of water issue you're going to have to treat? That's right. All of it. Well. You want me to talk the microphone? Yeah, please. Okay. And then, yeah. Um, so I, I, I just would encourage you to think about it because I think the taxpayers are willing to pay for it if they know they're going to get something out of it. And, and right. the money is not the issue. Right. Right. And, and right. the other thing, it, and it's just simply timing. And here's the other thing. I don't know if the um, general public is aware of this, but we've called two special meetings just so we can move this well, the wells and the test wells along faster. So we had a special meeting and, and you know to authorize the test wells. We then had another special meeting in between meetings because there was going to be too long of a span to because they had to come back and tell us that they didn't work. So we had another special meeting. Right. So we're not sitting here idly just kind of twiddling our thumbs waiting for things to happen. We're trying to move this along as fast as possible. I personally called the DNR and said I need a meeting as soon as possible. And Wednesday the 9th was the very soonest that they could get their team together. <clears throat> and me too. Me too. So I'm very pleased. And then again, like I said, our meeting with St. Bonnie went very well. Good. So Good. we're doing what Good. we can. I understand that. All I'm asking is to make sure that whatever we end up doing has got enough capacity Exactly. Get us where we need to go because a patchwork plan. I understand that. It's going to cost more, and you're always going to be behind. Which is what we're a absolutely, I couldn't agree with you more. Points Thank very you. well taken. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, Madam Mayor, uh, members of council, yeah, just getting back to um, verifying treatments. Once we find, once we get successful test wells in the formation that we know we're going to be drilling the, the production wells in. We can use those test wells to pilot, to kind of jump ahead. Mm -hmm. But we just, we just have to we have to get that water quality first 
Um, and especially, you know, um, being optimist, optimistic here, the DNR will also do, let's say, drill on Mount Sandy, for example, that's going to be a different water quality than the Tunnel City monologue. We're going to want to know what that is for treatment with the test well. So once we mm -hmm. get there, that's going to give us the data that we're looking for. Well, and even in the Tunnel City Wanawak, depending on where you go, you can get different water quality. So, and and and, and the Mount Simon. So we don't we won't know until we do the test wells. Okay, but I have a question. So you said four to six months on a design, but there's all kinds of water treatments all over the place, all over the United States. So basically, there are designs that are available that can come up to speed fairly quick. And you're, you're mm -hmm. saying that four to six is probably the max it would take to put a water treatment plant design together? Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. it's, you know, the process when you do one of these, it's, believe it or not, there's like eight different design disciplines that are involved. Okay. And it, you know, it starts at the sites, <clears throat> proceeds through the architecture, getting architectural renderings approved, getting building permits approved. Yeah. Um, and then you go all the way to the, you know, to the end, you got the electrical engineers that can't even start their work. Yeah. Until, until the after the design. Yeah. But in general, the designs aren't, you don't run into unique situations in general, are you? No. Okay. No, I mean, well, we know exactly what's going to need to be done. Okay. It's just okay. that you have to put go the, the step Put the step timing process. together and the timelines and everything and else. And okay. then on top of it, you have the, um, the solar department of health has to review the drawings too. So you have the advantage of Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. Mm -hmm. So you have these agencies on top of it. Okay. Here, so. mm -hmm. um, one thing I just want to you know bring up, if you just pull up that previous table from table one, please. Yeah, yep, that table right there. Too. So um, when we look at water demand projections, we, we tend not to focus on just one year or just a previous year, we usually go back at least five years because weather patterns can change during those years. You know, some years that are dry, some years that are in wet too. But even looking at this, if you look at the max state demand, I mean, even back in 2017, the max state demand was 1.234 million gallons per day. Um, that was actually higher than it was in 2019. And again, that's based upon, you know, pat weather, weather patterns for the most part, you know, where you use more irrigation. So, so we, you know, we like to kind of look at an average of those moving forward and, and coming up with a safe conservative number and not trying to over design the system too, to because that costs money mm -hmm. too. So just wanted to explain that. Thank you. Okay. So again, just going back up here again on this July 19th chart, it shows rainfall is pretty much flat to declining with the demand increasing. So I don't disagree with Mr. Johnson, but I still think the demand is climbing regardless of rainfall. And it's climbing because we have more homes. Yeah, and we're going to have <laughs> right. many more homes. Yep. Yep. So All right. I shoot high. All right. Thank you. And I think that can, it, any other comments or questions? Because I want to make sure that we all understand <clears throat> the process and where we're going. And I, I think what, is laying out there and we're just not there yet um, is that people are yearning to see a timeline of how all this comes together and how it's all supposed to happen mm -hmm. and it feels like an abyss right now uh, it does to me I'm sure it does to everybody else and I don't know when we get past that to actually having a timeline I would assume it's once we know the water quality and the DNR meeting and all that stuff so I a month away six months over two months away I don't know what, what do you think Yeah, that's, that's a good question. And, you know, so the, you know, the next step is a meeting with the DNR. That's going to tell us what we're allowed to do. Mm -hmm. do. And, and then once we have that meeting, they tell us, I mean, that, that we're going to focus on whatever that path is. Hopefully it's a combination of Mount Simon and Tunnel City Wanawak. Look at that. If it's not, it might just be two Tunnel City Wanawak wells. And then we're pin, pinpointing those deeper form aquifer formations while trying to keep distance away from existing wells. Too. So that, that's going to be the next step moving forward. And, and, and then going off for quotations, drill those next two test wells to get those constructed. Because I mean, I've, I've talked to some all drillers already, and they're, they're willing to do winter construction to keep this thing moving along. Mm, good. Too. So mm. just got to keep moving in that direction. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so we'll have a. 
we'll have a timeline. Um, I, I can't promise that it would be on the 22nd, but maybe within the next month we can have a timeline. If we have it before, then we can insert it or in, add it to our February um, component that um, meal or that we're doing if we, if we have it before the end of February. Otherwise, we'll put it in on the website. And there is a, um, a on the website, there's information too that people can access. Well, and there's always a caveat to having timelines is if you do them too soon because you set expectations and yet we have to keep managing everybody's expectations. And this is a stage that's always really painful in right. any kind of project development. Yeah. Well, I, think we, Absolutely. I think we ran into that with we're still fixing a little bit what polymers right. and filters we need at the current self water treatment plant where if maybe we would have taken a little more time the first time around maybe okay. it would have been caught but it's it's, a, it's an important process we're at right now and it can't just be rushed because people are obviously everyone's yearning to get it fixed and myself too because everyone wants it to help but right. it needs to be done right correctly and correct yeah. right all right with that thank you very much much mr johnson um we're going to go on to I'm still in my EDA here. Um, we're going to go on to consent agenda items. Our consent agenda items consist, are there any that you need to remove? Oh, Madam Mayor. I'm are sorry. persons to be heard? Um, we had Mr. DeColius uh, sign up, but you already spoke, okay. right? Yes. OK, thank you. <laughs> I, I did note that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have consent agenda items. Approve our work session meeting mi minutes from January 18th, 2022. Approve the city council regular meeting minutes from January 18th, 2022. A resolution to approve claims. D is approve amendment to the water tower lease agreement with Lakeside Networks. E is a resolution to accept improvements and authorize final payment for the 2020 street improvement projects. F is accept improvements and authorize final payment for well 2A rehabilitation. G is authorize final payment for test wells 8 and 9. And H is a resolution to approve the variance at 6841 Cardinal Cove Drive. I is a resolution to approve a comprehensive plan amendment at 1200 Rainbow Road. J is an ordinance it's ordinance number 474, which is a rezone at 1200 Rainbow Road. And J1 is authorizing publication of ordinance number 474 by title and summary. And K is a resolution to approve the agreement of understanding with animal control with the city of Monticello and approve the animal impound agreement with Oak Ridge Kennels. That, can, that is all of our consent agenda items. Questions? If none, is there a motion to approve consent agenda items A through K? So, so moved. moved. Kathleen got it first <laughs> <laughs> this time. And Mr. Chamberlain seconded that. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes. Next, we move on to our business items. Um, it's approve our cost sharing agreement with Midcontinent. I call them MIDCO. This is kind of too much of them. Uh, communications <laughs> for the construction of broadband services to unserved areas in the city of Minnetrista. I believe that's Ms. Palfus. That is. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, as you all know, we've been looking for solutions to our broadband issues here in the city. And we had MIDCO present at the January 3rd meeting a proposal to the city council to build out um, the north area of Minnetrista. Council directed staff to move forward and come up with some funding options. Those options were presented on January 18th, and the council directed staff to move forward with negotiations. After staff um, contacted MIDCO and through negotiations and discussions, MIDCO accepted the city's proposal of a contribution of 16.5% of the construction costs capped at the $400,000. Mr. Vos also made some modifications to the cost sharing agreement as discussed with the city council at the previous work session. And I've included um, the most notable changes in your memo, but the red line is also included in the packet. In addition to the changes that Bob, Bob Vos made, um, Midco actually finalized their project to include 495 homes instead of the proposed 466 homes. Although there are more homes, keep in mind we are capped at that $400,000. So the changes can be viewed obviously in the attachments along with the map and the addresses that will be served. 
Staff recommends approval of this cost sharing agreement with Midco. In addition, I have been in discussions with Hennepin County um, and have requested financial support. They have verbally agreed um, to contribute 50% of the city's contribution, which would be $200,000. We are still working through some agreement uh, verbiage issues, but I had a call today and they said that they do not foresee any more issues and they wanted to assure you that they, they think this is a great project and they see it being approved in the near future. So, Excellent. Great. That, Yay. Woo! Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Allie. With that, that's all I have on this. You have any questions? And Allie, thank you very much. You've done a fantastic job. Yeah, She's been working real hard on the county and I've given them a little nudge here and there, but it's been yeah. all alley. So thank you very much. Good, good job. Um, questions? Um, yeah. Just I'll bring us up, and I used to right. address, but um, there's nothing in the agreement about midco reliability or downtime. Do we need anything? No, I. We don't really want to delve into aspects of their business like that, more so than the speed they can provide. Why? And we so have why? the, huh? Why? Because it's their business. Because it's their business. That would be like telling, telling them how to run their business. Yeah. Telling someone else what channels they have to provide. Correct. Thank you for that example. Okay. So is, does this cover basically the rest of the underserved homes then? Correct. It should, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's and it went up from four sixty six to four ninety five. I yes. think so. So some of these residents, I think the majority of them have Frontier as their provider. Um, but yes, you are correct. Okay. This should get us up to speed. Well, this is really okay. exciting for the people that are underserved right now. Yes. I'm one of them. Um, how are we going to let the residents know? I know Midco will be letting them know address by address, but okay. I was going to ask if you guys wanted me to do some sort of press release. I think we should. I, you could Absolutely. Put it in the you could put it yeah. in the mayor's And I'll, I should yeah. write something in that. That goes out to some, but I think a press release would be excellent. Yeah. Um, I'll work on that this weekend. Yeah. And especially, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can do it. And it'll go on the council's corner, obviously, too. Mm -hmm. And Midco, their form of communication will be how? Mail? They have they have laid out their whole communication plan. I think they do postcards. Then they um, mail when they're when the service is ready to be set up. They mail um, them the timeline. So I think it's mostly mail. Okay. Um, but I'll be setting up a listserv for those included in the project, and I'll send out updates as I get them as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then our broadband meetings are done. Oh. Well, not not until it's done. But right. Yes. But. Yes, in, in general, theory, yes. the, the, everyone has service or options for service now. Correct, unless Lakeside, Lakeside would like to go yeah. in another tower yeah. or someone more approaches us at this point, yes. I think. I think your your comment is we don't have to have it on a regular. Correct. Yes. Right, yeah, yes. we'll just as need be kind of basis. Project updates. Right, project yeah. update, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. This is this is exciting news. <laughs> so. I um, want to thank Allie for all of her hard work. That yes. Was yes. She yes. got done. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. 14 months. That's right. 14. Yeah, it only yeah. took me 14 months. That's no, good. that's 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 good. <laughs> Considering where we were, you know, a little over a year ago, <laughs> this excellent, excellent. Um, okay, so I do need a motion to appro approve the cost sharing agreement with Mid Continent Communications for the construction of broadband services to the underserved areas in the city of Minnetrista. Moved. And is there a second? And a big second. All right. And a second. John will be the first one to sign up. All right. So Pam made that and John seconded that. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes. So next we have approve a professional services agreement for the 2022, no, I'm sorry, um, accept bids and award a contract for the 2022 street improvement projects. So this is also exciting news. It is exciting. Came in under yes. budget. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it is exciting, but I say I'm pretty jealous. I don't think I've ever got a round of applause for Maybe someday. <laughs> So I have three agenda items for the council this evening. The first is um, accepting the bids and awarding the contract for the 2022 street improvement project. Um, as the council is aware, this project is kind of initiated back in August of 2021. When we moved through the feasibility report as part of 
Chapter uh, 429, State Statute Limited to Design, and went out for bids. On January 19th, we held a bid opening. Uh, it was looking really promising. We had 12 prime contractors holding plans. 10 of them ended up bidding on the project, um, which we thought was a very good number. The bid tabulation is included in your uh, packet for review. And uh, as you'll see, the lowest responsive bid was received from GMH Asphalt Corporation. They're out of Chaska. And their grand total bid amount was $501,215.43. The engineer's estimate um, was at $563,355.43. So it was a good bid when compared to the engineer's estimate, as you'll see in the uh, bid tabulation. The, the highest bid was kind of an outlier at $724,000, but the rest of them were in that $500,000 range. And so uh, we do think that a good low bid was received. And um, as I've kind of just said, the construction bid is less than the cost estimates we've provided um, for a couple of reasons. We got lower bid prices. We got the project out earlier than we got it out to. early. And then mm -hmm. Gary's staff completed some of the storm sewer work that was in the feasibility report. So those costs were not included. And so um, that's why you're seeing a lower number than expected. Staff does recommend approving, oh, um, accepting the bids and awarding the contract to GMH. I've had. Um, one project experience with them before, and it's gone all right. I know Gary's worked with them in the past, and um, I won't put words in Gary's mouth, but as with any contractor, we'll um, administer the contract regardless of who they are and, and uh, make sure that the work gets done correctly. So I can stand for any questions that you guys have on the contract or what the bids received uh, prior to moving into the resolution. None? Okay, good good job. We won't give you a round of applause, but uh, <laughs> we uh, we do it. We I do think that um, it's really good that we got 10 bids. You know, last year it was a different story. I think the timing is was part of it. So we need to get our 2023 projects out there the same time frame. So we need to start thinking about those. Mm -hmm. And we can talk about that in a little bit. But let's... Uh, um, is there um, a motion to approve the um, accepting the bids and awarding the 2022 street improvement projects to GMH Asphalt Corporation in the amount of $501,215.43? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Chumperlin. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Refkin made that second. <clears throat> Any further questions, comments? All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes. So next, we're looking at professional ser awarding a professional services agreement for the same project. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, so included in your packet is a letter of proposal um, describing the scope of services that WSB proposes for this project in terms of construction and engineering, um, which we do for previous projects that this council has been involved with. Those, um, that scope typically includes construction administration. Um, that's a uh, project management. Uh, of the entire construction, the observation of the work, so staff on site, making sure that the work's getting um, done according to the plans and specifications. That's uh, um, a person for the residents to call and meet with on site and discuss any concerns or asking questions with. And then construction surveying, so taking the plans and providing the stakes and grades, grade lines necessary to construct the project. And then finally, uh, construction materials testing, so the bituminous and the concrete that comes on site, testing that to make sure that meets the required specifications. Um, the letter proposal kind of goes in, into detail on those services that um, we're proposing on. They're very similar to what we've included in previous projects. The fee amount in there is uh, not to exceed fee of $52,162. The spreadsheets are in there kind of detailing the hours we anticipate for the project manager for the inspection. Um, council's aware of, of the neighborhood. It's a smaller neighborhood than previous projects, and uh, the work's slightly different, uh, not a full depth reclamation project. So we expect a quicker construction timeline, and you can see that reflected in the amount of observation hours that we anticipate. Um, the project I should mention is, is funded by uh, city funds and then special assessments as well, and with the construction bid amount, of $501,215.43. The proposed indirect costs, including the construction engineering services, are at 24%. And that is described further in the next agenda item, declaring the project costs and um, determining the assessment amounts. So I can take any questions on the letter proposal if the council has any. Okay. 
professional services questions? No, I just want to say your charts are absolutely fabulous. Oh, and your numbers, you, <laughs> <laughs> you don't get a plus. <laughs> well, you take your noodles. <laughs> you, added, you added all the numbers down, you added them horizontal. I'm, I'm very impressed. This is a huge difference from this time last year. And I, I don't know that, that last year had anything to do with you. It's just that this presentation is so much better. Good. Anne well, likes charts. Like Anne likes well, charts. Like Just remember charts. that. <laughs> well, last year we were on, you know, Zoom for the this yes. meeting. So that's yeah. how we added to the that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. All right. Good job. So do I have a motion to approve professional services agreement for the 22 street improvement projects um, as presented in our packet in the amount, is it not to exceed, I believe? Correct. Okay, not, not to exceed $52,162. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Martinson. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Chumperlin. Any further questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 5-0. So then we'll move on to the uh, declare the cost to be assessed and order the preparation of proposed assessment and call for the hearing on the proposed assessments. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the council, and uh, Mr. Motsko, I just noticed the meeting date there on, on this agenda item says so March 7th, which is actually going to be the uh, assessment hearing date, not today's date. Oh. So. <clears throat> so in order to levy special assessments, which is proposed for this project, the city must declare the cost to be assessed, order the preparation of the proposed assessment amount, which we'll get into, and call for a hearing on the proposed assessments in accordance with state statute chapter 429. So uh, the city's assessment policy is, states that 50% of the total street and storm sewer costs um, can be assessed with this project, as I just mentioned, where more so just uh, the street costs, there really are no storm sewer costs with this. So um, what's proposed is to assess 50% of the street improvement costs. The as-bid project costs, now this is incorporating the 5% construction contingency and the indirects for this project is $603,637.13. As I mentioned, it includes the contingencies and indirects. At 50%, the assessable project cost is $301,818.56. There's 40 assessable units in the project area, resulting in an assessment rate of $7,545.46. So for ease of accounting and in alignment with past practice, we're just proposing to round that down and even it up to $7,545, which results in a total of funding from assessments of $301,800. That means that the city share is increasing by a, a small amount, um, just to account for that rounding. As the council may recall, the preliminary assessment amount called for in the feasibility report was $8,287 per unit. Um, working with finance director and Ellers, um, the interest rate for these assessments has been determined for this project, and that's 4%, and it'll be levied for a 20-year period, um, and follows the updated city assessment policy. So the next step is to declare the cost to be assessed, order the preparation of the proposed assessments, and call for the hearing. And then um, at, at this hearing, which is proposed to be on March 7th, um, we'll uh, discuss that final assessment amount and the, the um, the city will accept that final um, assessment role. So we have the notices ready to go in terms of letters to the residents and well as well as uh, the publication of Lake of Pioneer. That will go out tonight pending the council's direction. And again, the total amount proposed to be uh, assessed will be included in that in those letters in the publication as well as the assessment amount. So residents will be informed on um, what this is going to cost them and a lot of information about how the assessments can be paid and when they can be paid, when they accrue interest and things like that. Some of the questions that we anticipate answering at that assessment hearing. Uh, we do like to include under the uh, fiscal impact section here, just kind of a summary of the project as we've gone through from the beginning prior to design, after design and as bid. So um, you can see the progression of the costs in that table. And then the second table shows how the project's proposed to be funded you'll see that um, the specially assessed is, is that rounded down number and, and the city has that slightly higher amount for the surface improvements. So staff recommends declaring the, the cost to be assessed as discussed, ordering the preparation of the proposed assessment and calling for the hearing to be held on March 7th. 
extent very quickly. Thank you. Council? I have a question, which probably is more for Brian. Um, one of the properties is City of Natrista. Oh, um, the park. The park. The park. Oh, mm -hmm. James Park. Yeah. So how does that work? We just pay eat, ourselves. Pay our, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we pick up that cost. <laughs> no, I'm just curious how that works. Yeah, and sometimes I think we've even, I mean, yeah, whether we leave that in or take it out yeah. or whatever. We've always had them in, yeah. which is kind of odd, but yeah. Yeah. it's it's I mean, been in. Yeah, it's supposed to show the whole picture. It was not a park if someone lived there or for some reason it didn't want to take care of it as a park anymore mm -hmm. and a home is there, that it's, it's an accessible piece of land. Like the street improvement will provide value to that, that parcel. And that's like it's indeterminate in the sense of the three years. But again, yeah, is it a that's little silly? Cute. Yeah, it's a little silly, I know. <laughs> yeah. True yeah. question. OK, other questions? As this is just proposed assessments, the numbers may change when we actually pay all the final bills. I'm just jumping ahead to the last thing on our business. The they can't be more. 31,000 as to how do we account for that, which may affect this. So the assessments that we declare tonight are the, the, the maximum assessable mm -hmm. amount. We, if, if for some reason that fight, it, we've never done this, but if it were to come in significantly less, you could adjust it downward, but you can't adjust it upward. I'm seeing Sarah nodding, so okay, <laughs> I'm correct. Um, generally, it, it's usually such a small amount that to go through that whole process to reduce it, it, it costs more to do that than reducing it. So that's the only reason we haven't generally reduce the amounts from the original amount. Okay. Now, having said that, with this money that we're getting, that doesn't change the cost of the project. Right. Yeah. It just depends on how we decide to use it. Right, right. It really just helps buy down that city share of the project that, you know, the 301's being assessed. The, I mean, ultimately, the, the surface improvements is our 301 you know, so that 31 can go to, to help, you know, go in the fund balance to pay for that. Um, right. And then there's also mm -hmm. then just the, the stormwater components will come out of the stormwater fund, or, or, or I think there was some, some of that, right. those other non assessable costs or whatever yes. that were yeah. the drying mm -hmm. tile. Or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I guess the only thing I was looking at is if for some reason we said, well, let's take it off the assessments at 786 per unit. So, I mean, it's not an insignificant amount. No, but you have to be careful because we've been assessing 50% to right. all the other properties. and Other than if it was too high, then we would go. Right, down. right. If it, you know, like, for instance, when we did Halstead, right. we didn't do the 50 because it was would have been astronomical. Right. But when it gets too high, then we do a little bit less. But other than that, I mean, like, Hard scrabble, yep. uh, lowering. We've done fifty percent. It wouldn't be quite fair, and I think this was one of the arguments um, for the school assessment. You know, to not yeah. reduce it too much. So, um, I think yeah, we should just, just yeah, a couple of points. We, yeah, we usually haven't done it. We've assessed on the front end of the project. We've been pretty consistent. If the project has a little overrun, we don't adjust against the property owner. So it has a little bit of a you know comes in better. We don't adjust to, to the mayor's right. point. You know, it gets to be more just administrative versus really anything really impactful or meaningful. And then um, secondly, that 31,000 we're getting, the way I understand it, it's almost a replenishment of, didn't our MSA get reduced by some of the gas taxes? Go, so this is almost just making us whole from our reduction in our, our previous allocations of MSA. So it's not really, I, I don't know if I'm saying it right, it's not really new dollars, but it's almost just the state. It's not additional of, dollars, it's kind of a reallocation. Re a reallocation. However, yeah. we can use it we can use it on city streets right. that aren't MSA. So right. it's a little, it's more flexible, it's which more is open. good, yep, yep, mm -hmm. yep. which is good, so. Okay, I just, yeah. All right. That's fine. Yep. So um, we need to um, accept, wait, sorry, uh, declare the cost to be assessed. So the cost to be assessed will be 3,100, no, $301,800 dollars is what we're going to be assessing and each assessment will be seven thousand five hundred and forty five dollars 
And then we will call the hearing for March 7th. So quick question. I know with the hard scrabble, and there was one project that we did, and somehow some numbers or PIDs or something got mixed up. I want to make sure that we have ample time, should that happen, that we can make that adjustment. Is March 7th a good time? If, if so anything we, we gets... So we to about two weeks in advance. Um, and so if the letters go out tomorrow. Okay. We, and if there are any issues, we'd love to hear, you know, certain by the end of the week. Okay. And then my only, yeah, okay, we want to make sure. And then the, and then, um, the only other thing I have, since when we originally did the open house for this, as you pointed out, um, thank you for that reminder, we did um, a Zoom meeting. Would it be possible that you let people know, I mean, I don't, I'm just throwing this out as an option, mm -hmm. that maybe half hour before the regular meeting, if you and Allison wanted to meet with people to talk to them about their any issues because we found the open houses have been very helpful but then we found a couple people come during the assessment hearing and ask more questions pertaining to the construction and if we could get those taken care of prior to the meeting it might be helpful would that we be would yeah and, and we've I've benefited from that on previous projects as well so I think that's a great idea and then that would kind of eat into the work session meeting a little bit, is that? No, I think just, well, yeah. We, we'll we try and wrap up at 6.30 so that if people do want to come and have a quick conversation with you folks, just might make it easier yeah. for the meeting. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll figure out the best way if that uh, information should be in that letter that goes out tomorrow or maybe even a separate invite letter. Um, Whichever, just so that they are aware of that. All right. All right. Council, what is your pleasure? A motion? So moved. Thank you. All second. All right. Second was made by Pam. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes. And then um, accept and award a contract for the replacement of the playground equipment at Friendship Park. I thought of Kathleen when I was looking at this. And I'm like, I don't know. Kathleen, you have to guide us through which one you like. I asked my kids. Okay, there you go. Uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council, thank you. This is, I know, a very large packet item, and I apologize for that. Um, I will make my part of it really short. Um, the amenities at Friendship Park went in 1980 or 1998, 1999. There are three separate containers out there, a playground container, a swing container, and a smaller container with some spring toys in it right now. Uh, there's also a single picnic table and two park benches that are out there. The swings and playground equipment, as well as the P-Rock fall protection do not meet the, the standards um, for national playground safety uh, anymore. So we had a professional service agreement with WSB um, to help us find some contracted vendors to submit some plans for that. The rehabilitation, I just noted a typo, it's not Jennings Park. Uh, this is Friendship Park. Um, similar to what we did in Jennings, we were awarded in two phases. Uh, this being the first one, which is the equipment, and second being the removal of the existing, the P-Rock, and then redoing of the container shells themselves. One condition that we have is that I put on uh, with Robert Slipke, he's the senior landscape architect at WSB. We do not want to change the size of the containers um, due to the fact that A, I don't want irrigation getting in, uh, tore up and destroyed. We've had that happen on a park job twice before we've repaired stuff. It gets very expensive. Um, and turf restoration as well as there's no need for it there. I mean, they're just fine. So with that in mind, um, the playground swing, the playground area, the swings net um, went out for bid. Uh, WSB asked four vendors for playground equipment layouts, which is in your packet and designs. Um, we capped it at 75,000. They all returned at that 75,000 or below. I mean, we're within $500. So. Mm -hmm. Um, Bob's Robert Slipka and I both talked, uh, looked over the plans, and looking over, you know, who's better, what's what's better, what's not. They are all equal 
across the board. I mean, these are all commercial park equipment. I mean, there's not one better than the other. Um, durability, functionality. The other factor we looked at, so you take price out of that, you take that out of it. How about delivery? Everybody's looking at that August delivery. Some can do it sooner if they jockey a schedule around. It's not a big deal because we do have the removals and that stuff to take care of. So with the lead times not being there, um, the price not being a big factor, uh, difference-wise, and the only limiting factor is what the design is. Um, I would tell you that right now in our parts, we do have the Little Tice commercial uh, that's been put in, and we do have Wisconsin, uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin playgrounds for sure that I know of. I don't know if David can attest to what we have in a, the old, I don't know what who put the older stuff in, but I know those are two that we've used already in the past, but they're all good. So what I'm going to ask, and um, I don't want to be the one to make a decision, because there's four different ones. Because you're not going to play on it, right? <laughs> I'm not going to play on it. Um, I do not want to play favorites, act like I'm playing favoritism to any of them. I want you guys to decide. So I hope you took the time to look through and kind of looked at the different factors. They're all very equal in what their capacity is, so I'll leave it uh, to your discussion. And it'll all be, of course, paid out of the uh, Park CIP funds, so um, we'll recommend after what I'll let you guys discuss and what you guys come up with and leave it to you here to Thank you. chime in. Yeah. So, <laughs> Kathleen. <laughs> My kids like one. Um, the only caveat is I don't know how many mature trees there are, but I know the roof puts it over the 75. Um, I don't know um, what the tree coverage is there. Um, not not a lot. Right there now. is some trees there. We have planted some in the in you know in the past years. Um, I believe there's I believe there's a, a couple of newer maples. I believe there is a linden or two, and I know that there's a couple of green ash. So I mean there is there is tree cover, but none of that will be affected. So. I like the slide in that one. You like the slide and they like the climbing wall. Yeah. It had the, a good number of things for them to do. They um they like the little kid spot. Um yeah, they like that one the best. <laughs> when you say number one, may I ask which um it's the, the Northland North Recreation oh. Little Takes. It's oh, on okay. page one eighty three. Or well it starts on page one eighty two, right? Mm -hmm. Uh maybe I'm sorry, one eighty one. Yeah, they have they have a lot of pictures, so I think it start the pictures start at one eighty one. There's lots of photos, which yep. is very nice. I mean, and actually, this is our park. Yeah, that is that you're looking at right here, which is nice that they can overlay these on, so you can see there is tree cover, you know, in the area. It's you know where the actual park itself is, not so much where the playground equipment is, but everything else has it. So, so there there's an extra charge for the I didn't catch that the Pardon? roof. The roof was an option. And how much added. is that? Thirty-two forty-six. Um, I believe it's the shape of the roof. Is that what I believe is the option? Hex, hex roof is option. A hex roof, as compared, I believe, to the round. Oh. I'm assuming that was. So this is the round one that's included. Correct. Oh, okay. Just I think a roof is good. It mm -hmm. is good. Yeah, that was. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I I have a couple other yeah. questions here on the swing set. I attended a park meeting over in Watertown, and a group of residents were there. And one of the things they asked for was a swing that's like a, a double, where you fit two kids on instead of just the one. Um, the Delano Landscape um, Company uh, created it, and it is really a cool swing. Is that something that you could put into this? You take out one of the normal swings yeah. then because you have to have the little kid one and you have to have the one for handicap accessible. So then it'll only oh. be one normal swing. Okay. We've had issues in our neighborhood oh. for testing swings. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, exactly. <laughs> so, and that was, that was a very popular item asked for for the swings. Um, and then the other thing is the park benches. Are there benches here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are two benches and a picnic table. We would do the similar to what we did at Jennings Cove. We would remove them. Um, the tops of the picnic table as well as the seating and the back of the bench, the seat bench, are the extruded um, steel with the uh, plastic coating, which are fine. But we would take the frames themselves, have them um, sandblasted and repowder coated and reuse them. Okay. 
Because one of the quests, another request, very popular, was somehow having a cover over the benches because that's where the moms sit, and it's hot. <laughs> Those could maybe go under so. the tree then. Well, they are. They're not, you can't see them here, but if you're looking right here to where it would be to the left of the screen, there is one back there, and then there is one. The picnic table and the bench are back right where the arrow is there, or where the mm -hmm. hand is going. There's the bench you can see in the picnic table right there. So they are in the shade. Okay. And the other one is on the other side. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Good. And you can try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll go with what the kids want. How's that? <laughs> okay. So is there, um, so I'm sure, um, Kathleen, you want to make a motion, right? <laughs> to, uh, let's see, award the contract to uh, Northland Recreation for Friendship Park for um, number one, I guess, would be the... So moved. Okay. And is there a second? I'll second. Okay. And Pam seconded that. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes. And then D is accept funds from the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act. This is what John was talking about before. The 31000 Is that Brian? I think Allison's going to oh, start. Okay. Take that. Uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council, staff uh, received notification from MnDOT that the Federal Coronavirus Response Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act, CRRSAA, because we love acronyms, um, is proposed um, to offset impacts of funding that the city has realized uh, due to the coronavirus um, issues that have reduced tax gas tax revenue. Um, using the MnDOT state aid formula for uh, distribution, the MnDOT has uh, identified $31,459 uh, to the city of Minnetrista. Um, included in your packet is a resolution that not only um, we're recommending that council um, accept the, the allocation, um, but we would also need to know how the council would like to spend this money. Um, MnDOT has provided five options for consideration to use the money, um, A, B, C, D, and E in your packet. One being municipal state aid system regular maintenance. Uh, second is city road maintenance. Third is municipal state aid regular construction. Uh, fourth is city road construction. And fifth is vehicle. Based on uh, the upcoming 2022 street improvement project, staff is recommending that uh, the city look to the option B, the city road maintenance. And the reason that we would uh, request a formal um, direction on use of these funds is uh, we do have to get back to MnDOT by the end of the month on how the city intends to use these funds. Um, as far as reporting goes, there is a year-end report that would be submitted to MnDOT indicating how much of the funds were used and on what projects so that they can use it for their auditing purposes. Uh, given the dollar amount, uh, staff would certainly recommend that it would be easiest and best to use it all on one project um, and that we would report that accordingly to the state. Yep. With that, I would be happy to answer any questions that the council has. Yeah, okay. Um, our notes say city road construction. You said city road maintenance. And I'm sorry. I asked why it wasn't city road maintenance. Um, which one is it? I'm sorry, you're correct. It is city road construction. Thank you for pointing that out. That's option D. And, and why? Um, we just looked at it as it, it's, I mean, you could look at it as a maintenance fund, but when we look at the, um, when we've looked at the city's cost for construction, we felt that the construction fund would be better suited for this money. Okay. And we all, we just awarded the contract, so we know for sure we're going to be spending it. And we, well, and then by the end of the month, we can then yeah. let them know. Yeah. See how much just logistics it's versus just, allocating yeah. to the one project versus 11 streets that Gary goes out and does some minor, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. for 31000 okay. okay. Is there a motion then to um, accept the funds and um, earmark them for our 2022 city road construction project? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Any further questions? All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, 
motion passes 5-0. Just um, real quick, we, since we're already now, we're in the beginning of February, and I know it seems early, but if we want to get into that bidding um, cycle again, as we did this year, we are going to have to start thinking about our 2023 roads. Plus, I want it to also, are we going to have any funds available since this came in less, um, this this 501 versus 563? And then also with this extra 30,000, are we going to have some funds to do any overlays this year? Uh, Madam Mayor, that's a, that's a good question. So we certainly had... Um, uh, so there, there are two components to that. One, the scheduling for next year's project. Uh, tomorrow, um, Mr. Peters and Mr. Gadbois and I are meeting to look at what um, we would like to bring forward for council to consider for a 2023 project. And to your second question about overlay uh, prices, I did, um, uh, Finance Director Grimm and I exchanged some emails last week as far as what we have for budget for overlays. So we will be coming back to council with that for um, consideration for going out for quotes this will year. Will that be on the 22nd? Um, like more of a work session item to pin that down or, or an action item? For Well, it depends. I don't want to get too far into the season for if we're going to do overlays because then again, you don't get really good bids. So I'd like to do it sooner than later. Yeah, certainly. Um, we could look at the 22nd. We might be a little bit aggressive. Well, we would be... We would first have to bring a professional services agreement for you on the 22nd and then get that quote package ready. Um, oh, it wouldn't be a quote. It would be a bid package be bid, yeah. um, because of the dollar amount. But yes, we could look at an expedited um, schedule for the council consideration. The nice thing about the overlay work is it tends to be filler work for some of these contractors mm -hmm. because they're not digging down. Right. They're not doing utility work. Okay. Um, we do have a little more flexibility with that, but we are. Did we bid those later last year? We didn't do any last year. I'm trying to think of historically, they have been later. We got. Um, we did have Northwest do some work on Morning View, along okay. with the Sunnyfield project. Um, so we did. That was the overlay work we did last. Oh year. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, just maybe to remind the council, uh, as far as through our budgeting process in the summer, we had presented some different options. And I think the preliminary option and what was put in the budget was to do the enchanted area mm -hmm. for about mm -hmm. four hundred some thousand dollars for four hundred four twenty five. So that's where, to Allison's point, it would be a bid project. You know, it's mm -hmm. over one seventy five, and yep. and I think it would be a pretty good scope of project to do. You know, or a pretty good area to do. Is that a good area considering where we're going to be doing? I mean, so they're kind of separated. Think about that. I'm thinking in terms of location because we have Jennings Cove over here that we're doing. If GMBH, whatever, uh, is would bid on it, that would be a little bit further away. Um, I think it, it this size of project, we would we would attract bidders. Okay. On that. All right. It's not a. It's 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 a it's a good size overlay project. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, well then. I think you could bring it back at the regular meeting so we can make a decision. Or bring that professional services. Yes, agreement. we'll have to bring a professional services agreement okay. first, and then we would look at, um, I'll work with Mr. Gabois as far as timing on that. Okay. But because of the nature of the project, we do anticipate it to be a faster okay. turnaround on plans and specifications than a typical road project. All right. Okay. Yeah, we'd be able to probably have bids out and received by April, May, right? Or roughly? My yeah. Quick. Yes, that's that correct. would be good. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, then we'll move on to staff reports. We have public works superintendent, Mr. Peters. It's on here. <laughs> <laughs> Got the deer in the headlight look. What? I guess what was? I don't know. Were you maybe gonna on the water tower? Water tower. Maybe water tower. Water oh, water tower. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm like Here's really <laughs> got me up, <laughs> left me speechless for a change, and I like to talk. Um, <laughs> yeah, the update on that is Excel did get the main power line run in. The transformer has been installed. Um, the pan, the um, from the transformer then to the tower itself to the distribution panel is in. Uh, the meter is not in yet. Uh, there was some discussion on how many meter heads to put in. We only need one. So that's been taken care of. The electricians will be on site, it sounds like, this week to finish up. But they need to connect then from the um, meter assembly into the building. Um, hopefully by the end of the week, knock on wood, that we will have power to power to the tower. So, um, and then beyond that, we should be able to start uh, filling, uh, disinfecting again, uh, wait our 
two cycles for 48 hours between the two tests um, and then uh, start to put the, we can put the tower online. All right. Great. Yay. Yay. We'll, we'll clap next time, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Make sure and Adam's here though, Leah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other? I want to if I just got a couple of quick items for me, probably future work session items or mm -hmm. topics. So one would be, and in, in my, myself and Gary have been talking about um, looking into potentially some water meter, replacing some in, in some areas of the cities where the water meters are getting to be 20 years old. So we have some dollars budgeted in, in a 2022 budget and 23, 24 and beyond, but we may be looking at potentially doing more faster based on if meters are start if failing or just making sure that they're they're working correctly and stuff. So um, we'll have some information I think at a future meeting on that, not in the not too distant future. We met with uh, the vendor today and stuff. So um, meter technology services who we met with, they are our supplier for our badger meters. Um, what it actually comes down to is not so much the meter itself that's failing. It is the Ertz or the reader that sends the signal out to us that we read. Um, there are three different types that we have in the city. There are 50 watt uh, wake up, there are 60 watt and the newer 100 watts, which we have. Um, most of the, all the new installs are all 100 watt, which are 20 year lifespan on the batteries. The 50 watt are only 10 year. They've been pushing 20 years on them. And so we are starting. Of, yeah, that would come out of the water fund. Yeah. Correct. Anyway. So we're starting to find that they're starting to not read anymore. So we're meeting with them too. And we'd be looking at probably a two year project to, to split it between the two years. But we are talking a significant amount of meters on the south and south and central part of town. Uh, we did the north end four years ago. Yeah, I think it was we did that in house, but that was only a hundred, yeah. couple hundred meters. I mean, we're talking maybe almost a thousand meters in two years and there's no way staff can handle that inside. So we'd have all the numbers to present to you what we what, what it would cost and that okay. stuff. So, but we definitely would like to bring that sooner than later. It is something that okay. needs to get done here uh, in the near future, but it is a nice project. It doesn't have to be the summer. It can be winter, it can go through. So, I mean, it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we'll explain all that yeah. when we get to it. Okay. And then the last item, probably just for some of the additional final um, uh, information on some of the ARPA clarifications. I know the mayor, you've even been sending some of the yeah. uh, the final rule and, and some of those things. Maybe it wouldn't be bad to touch base. I think our first report for the city is due in April, okay. at the end of the uh, end of April forum. And we've talked about obviously the cable funds, and we may have the mm -hmm. county component, and then we have them. Um, you know, water projects potentially ongoing, and they've talked about you can use uh, lost revenue. So there's different things that have been updated as far as mm -hmm. um, the ARPA, um, I guess, what would you call it? Not let her legislation or funding, or fun, right? Yeah, funding, uh, final, uh, final um, rule. ruling. Yeah, mm -hmm. ruling. So final ruling. maybe that could be a, a topic okay. at one of the next um, few work sessions yeah. or just to talk through that with the council. So. Well, I don't. What else do we have? No, we also have a ATV is on the next one. Okay. ATV ordinance, and then we have the tier, the tier water water. Tier coming to one of the next mm -hmm. weather, the next Possibly meeting, or one of the couple. Yeah. Some <laughs> compensation study. Okay. Ideas. So maybe spread those those things out over the next two, probably. Sure. Two to three, I suppose. Two to, yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything else that you can think of for work sessions? Okay. All right. All right. That's and then you need. Um, somebody for parks? Yes. Okay. We are, there's a meeting tomorrow night. Okay. Um, <laughs> I can. I think I can make it. I okay. think we have a forum. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Good. All right. Um, I'll be there. All right. Just remind me. <laughs> okay. Okay. That, oh. oh. Uh, don't forget, we have a, an initial interview tomorrow, and then final interviews next week. Okay. So those are special meetings that we've already correct. called and they've mm -hmm. been posted. Yes, so. and I'll be sending information about the final interviews, hopefully by Thursday. Yeah, okay. You get some feedback on the questions and then okay. I'll send you a final schedule. So the hopefully. gentleman for tomorrow, he is cleared his COVID? He is cleared. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that based on testing or just I on that five day? I didn't inquire, but okay. he's going on vacation after, so I imagine... Okay. He's getting been, tested. But. And that's two, two, three, and four. Two for one group, three for the, the other group, and four for final. Correct. Test. Okay. And then, um, yeah, mm -hmm. um, council reports. Any 
before um, it's just mound fire was canceled and it yeah. hasn't been rescheduled yet. Okay. And I just have a question. Are we gonna get the updated population on the signs for the town? I'll ask your towns. The county takes care of that so we could check with them, I suppose, and find out. Yeah, yeah. I think they're a little side. old. Yeah. Yeah. I know the one up on 110 North coming in is yeah. really old. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's yeah. like that 43 way off. or I don't know what it is. I keep, I should just go up there and paint it. <laughs> um, yeah, just uh, check on that. That would be good. Um, any other? So again, we all uh, attended the special meeting for the interviews. We're in that process. Um, and we'll hopefully be finalizing somebody to fill Mike Brony's position, uh, the administrator position, uh, soon. So that's coming. And I um, can't remember. So yeah, we had the, I had the meeting with St. Bonnie, and we'll have the meeting with DNR. We will come back and, and uh, report back to you on that. Would it be possible to send the, count, uh, the council kind of an FYI informational thing after our meeting with the DNR? So we can update them bef before the next council meeting. Sarah, is that, you know, just for an update? Sure, Madam Mayor, members of the council, I'd suggest one of the staff members sends that out to the yeah. council and maybe blind copies the council so that you don't reply right. all. That's fine. I just thought it might you might be interested in the re results of that. We may not know Wednesday, but as soon as we know, then we could maybe send out an email and let, let you all know so that you're not in the dark until the next meeting, which isn't until the 22nd. Okay, so, great. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it. Oh, John? Pioneer Sarah Creek from January 20th. Uh, this time of year, typically we're doing a couple things. Uh, we have to report a projected work plan each year mm -hmm. um, to the uh, Board of Water and Soil Resources, better known Bowser. as Bowser. Bowser. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to have that by the end of April. Comments are required by March 12th. So two things besides giving them an audited financial. This time of year we'll be reporting on our 2021. What did we project and what did we do? And then we also create a 2022 work plan to say, here's what we project to do in 2022. So in January, we started that process of looking at the line items and filling them out. Next week, when we have our next meeting, uh, then we'll finalize it. So our next meeting is Thursday the 17th, which I'll plan to attend. The other thing that we did or that came up in this last meeting, there is a TAC meeting that's been scheduled. Cities have been advised that'll be Wednesday the 15th. Uh, from staff will be Nick Olson, and from WSB will be Laura Riscola. Riscola, yes. Riscola, mm -hmm. uh, will attend. Okay. Uh, right now, the city doesn't have any hot button topics, but we'll see what the six cities together okay. put together. Then the committee can look at them, the commission can look at them and see what will fit. Okay, good. That's it. Great, thanks, John. All right. I think we're done. So if there's a motion to adjourn, we can all go home. So moved. Thank you, Kathleen. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ann. All those in favor, signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes by vote. Good night and thank you. Good meeting. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.